Wednesday the 22nd of August and we're in Wancourt in France. We're just off to the Wargraves. It's, um, well, it's 7.21 our time, but 8.21 their time. And obviously you can see there's a windmill there, but like the mist's just rising. Um, yeah. Tractor Central around here. It's actually quite peaceful. You can just hear the road in the background a little bit. And that's my mum closing the door, but we're the only people here. I think that's perhaps why my dad wanted to get here early. Not that I think it's a very popular one. It's like not got hundreds of thousands like some of them. And you just... So we know exactly where um, Joe is. We just have to find the bit. I think he's like row B. Row B, no plot B. Row two, number twenty-two. But look at them all. All of those men were killed in action in like hours. Like there was something like a quarter of a million men killed in like two months before the end of the war but, oh I think I'm gonna end up crying just having a search for it now we found like where the, the graves are like numbered as B A B whatever and obviously paying respects to everybody here not just my great great uncle Joe. Um, we're gonna, I think, probably walk along all of them and see if there's anybody that was actually killed in action a hundred years ago from today. Because I think that's a really nice thing to do because not all of these people will have family that are able to attend like we can. Um, oh gosh, yeah. It's really, really moving. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't really think it would affect me like this. Oh, I'm crying. What I mean about the graves being numbered, so this is like row 1E, and then this is row 1D, 1C, 1B, 1A. But then there's one A and then it kind of jumps to four. So four A is here. And then four B, etc. So I'm gonna just carry on until I find two B. And so then how sad are these again. ones? These ones are like to a soldier of the Great War, unknown to God. And that means that they weren't able to like identify them. That's that's really sad. So basically, all of these ones at, at the end, I think, the last two on this row and this row, and there's four on that row, five, six, seven. There's quite a lot that they died um, and weren't able to be identified. Ugh.
think my mum and dad have found it, so I'm just going to wander over that now. I'll probably spend a little bit of time just paying my respects and being peaceful and not doing any recording, and then I'll do some recording afterwards. So there's a monument here that says, Their name liveth forevermore. And it's right near my uncle's, or my great great uncle's grave. Oh. We've now found the grave and spent some time there and my mum and me and had a little cry and this is cemetery register so I'll probably look in there in a minute but I just wanted to give the family like a an idea of where it is so it's about where mum is stood now and this is as you walk into the cemetery and then obviously you've got the cross there and then you've got the church in the background. See if I can try and read this, it's quite long. It says, the war on the Western Front, 1914 to 1918. In the First World War, the Western Front, a battle, a battle line extending from the Channel Coast to Switzerland, along which for four years, millions of men fought and died, was the principal and vital theater. Against the German army were arrayed and the armies of the British Commonwealth, France, Belgium and latterly the United States. The first two months of the war of movement saw the containment and partial reports of the initial German thrust. There then followed three and a half years of static trench fighting, a war of attrition, during which defensive power was paramount. Neither side could effect a breakthrough and great battles were fought for, for, for small territorial gains. The last seven months were again a war of movement, culminating in the Allied defence starting in August, which finally achieved the breakthrough leading to the armistice of the 11th of November 1918. The six divisions of the British Expeditionary Force, which went to France on the outset in 1914, were deployed amongst the French armies and played their full part from the 23rd of August in the Battle of Mons, Le Cateau, the Marine and the Assane. The next three weeks during which the battle line moved every day were highly critical periods in which the German played for ending the war at a stroke which was foiled in, and the issue deferred. In the first two weeks of October, the BEF was moved from the central sector of the front up to the Flanders. This move shortened its lines of communication, which ran through Dunkirk, Calais and Boulogne, and they enabled it to protect these ports, which were vital to both its own supply and reinforcement and to the Royal Navy's commandment of the Channel. Over the next four years, during which it, its strength rose to 50 British and 12 overseas Commonwealth divisions, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, South African, Indian and troops from Newfoundland, the British West Indies and other territories, the BEF progressively took over more of the northern sector of the Allied line and fought a series of battles of attrition of which the greatest was the first Battle of the Somme in 1916. After the German offensive of late March to mid-July 1918 had been contained, the advance to victory began on the 8th of August with the Battle of Amiens, continued a broadening front with the Second Battle of the Somme and of Arras, and in September extended to the Epes saline. The advance swiftly gathered momentum and by the day of the armistice, the front line ran 50 miles or more eastwards of its starting points. Nearly 750,000 Commonwealth soldiers and sailors and airmen died on the Western Front, 200,000 in Belgium and over 500,000 in France. They are the Commonwealth they are commemorated upon headstones marking graves in over 1,000 war cemeteries and 2,000 civil ceremonies, or on one of the six memorials in Belgium and 20 in France, which carry the names of more than 300,000 who have no known grave. The One Court British, Ceremony, Cem the one Court Bre British Cemetery this cemetery was opened in 1917 after the capture of the One Court and was used until 1918 when it fell into German hands for five months. 
After the armistice, it was reopened for reburials from the battlefields. It contains the graves of 1,689 British and 246 Canadian soldiers. And there's a map of the um, like war area there. It's really so moving, all this. And then that other writing that you can see, that's what I've just read read out but it's all in French and I don't read French lest we forget We just stopped on the side of the road to look at the map, but there's loads of cows here, just like behind like the smallest little bit of barbed wire. It's really random. I'm really feeling so tired and I just can't sleep. It's not good. I'm still only getting about two hours sleep a night. It's ridiculous. Um, I don't actually know how my body's still functioning on nearly two hours sleep. I get about four if I take my meds, like, but I don't want to be like come reliant on sleep meds and I also feel really like groggy all the time if I take them so it's like catch 22 best of both worlds type thing roads around here are just like country roads oh my goodness, it's really everywhere there is a right oh my gosh it's not even wide enough for two cars We're now heading back from France, back to the UK, and um, I think we might be on like a double decker this time. Is if that's a... no, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're on. Ne nearly back in England. Well, we're not nearly back in England at all, actually, but. We we're a damn sight closer than we've been for the last few hours. Just a really quick update before I go to bed. Today has been super um, long and exhausting. I think we spent over 14 and a half hours in the car travelling. So we didn't get back home until about half past nine, quarter to ten at night. And we left the apartment in France that like 7 15 our time so that's why there's been no updates because there has literally been nothing to say apart from we're stuck on the m25 we're stuck on the m40 we're stuck in traffic um yeah that is the update um we came home and then we went to the local pub just for a drink it's like home from home in there they've got like two dogs and there was just by the end time we got there there was just like basically us there was a few other customers but they left and then there was just us and we we're just having a chat and sitting on the sofas and yeah it's really just like being in their living room really it's lovely and it's now about 1am um, and given that I've been awake since 3am like yesterday I'm going to go to sleep well attempt to go to sleep but I've started they did warn me that this would happen like you can get this thing called like brain zaps when you've been on an SNRI and it's just like your body getting used to not having the um, neurotransmitter or whatever the neuroadrenaline or whatever the drug um, was um, that was in the SNRI um, whatever the drug was that was in the or whatever the active component was that was in the SNRI um, so I just yeah I've noticed that I've started to get them today so it could be an interesting week or two and before I go back on the progesterone and back into hospital because now my body's trying to adapt to new psychiatric medication. Woohoo! This illness is exhausting and I 
am exhausted, so I'm really hoping that I can sleep tonight. Really, really, please, come on. I can't even take sleeping meds because I've got an appointment at 9 o'clock in the morning. I know, it's good. Life is good at the moment. Bye, everybody. Night.